good evening everyone can somebody please confirm like uh, whether they can uh, listen me and see my screen can you hear me can you see my screen yes yeah thank you so welcome to gate uh, previous year question solutions i'm shankar rao phd scholar from department of electrical engineering iit hyderabad so today we will uh, see uh, for some questions from four year series uh, that were given in previous year gate uh, electric electric uh, ece uh, question papers and also uh, before solving those questions we will see the related concepts and then we will solve those questions so so this is the question that was given in gate 2017 ece in set 1 uh, for one mark so a periodic signal x of t has a trigonometric fourier series expansion that is given and some conditions are given like if x of t equal to minus x of minus t equal to minus x of t minus pi by omega naught Uh, we can conclude that uh, four options are given so this question is about trigonometric fourier series so before solving this question uh, and also one more question i'll show you here uh, this is this is another question it was this was given at gate 2015 electrical engineering for two marks and uh, here also this is about the fourier series expansion only so before solving this question uh, we will uh, go through the related concept and then we'll solve these questions is this okay sir sir i have a doubt from lti system okay yes sir sir can you explain basics of lti system properties like linearity and time invariance and stability actually uh, okay that i can explain but uh, the schedule we have uh, given like today we will see about four year series okay sir. okay and time permits i'll explain or else uh, lta systems i think i'll be uh, dealing maybe next week or next to next week okay okay sir because already we have announced uh, like we, we are going to solve four year series fine now we will see about four year series so four year series uh, is defined for four year series expansion is defined for periodic signals as you all know you might have studied in uh, second year of signals and system this is uh, defined for uh, periodic signals actually we have two types of fourier series one is continuous fourier series and discrete fourier series if the signal is continuous in time and periodic then continuous time fourier series is defined and if it is the signal is discrete and periodic discrete signals for discrete and periodic signals discrete fourier series is defined Uh, today we will see about continuous time fourier series till so again in this we can have like two types of expansions are def defined one is trigonometric fourier series and another one is exponential fourier series or uh, complex fourier series okay so continuous fourier series we can have like two ways we can represent one is trigonometric fourier series and another way is exponential fourier series so we will solve questions from this and this in today's class uh, before that uh, we will see some of the concepts first we will see about trigonometric fourier series and how exponential fourier series can be uh, derived from that 
uh, let us say we have one signal yeah let us say we have some uh, like periodic signal g of t and let us say uh, it's a square wave assume it's a periodic square wave it's a periodic square wave let's say one cycle and drawing so this we can let us say i have some other signal like x of t as some c1 sin t let us say so it is like this now i want to approximate this g of t with some sinusoidal signal let us say g of t in terms of sin t i want to express let us say this one now it is not the correct approximation now let us say i am taking two sinusoidal signal let us say c1 sin t plus c2 sin 2t then i may get somewhat the error between actually let us say this is the approximation x of t is the approximation and g of t is our actual signal and x of t this one is our approximation so i want to approximate some periodic signal g of t with combination of sinusoidal signals so if i am adding two sinusoidal signal that sin t and sin 2t then we may get some kind of signal like this and suppose if i am adding one more signal that is c1 sin t plus c2 sin 2t plus c3 sin 3t then the approximation can be improved a little bit somewhat the approximation can be improved so sum of three sinusoidal signals like this suppose if i am taking large number of harmonics that is c1 sin t plus c2 sin 2t that is 100 harmonics i am ta taking c100 into sin 100t so somewhat clear approximation we will get like like this okay so what we are doing is g of t is a periodic signal we want to approximate that as a combination of some sinusoidal signals so here see frequencies are 1 into t like 1 2 3 like that uh, like harmonics so integral multiples suppose if you are taking large number of this harmonic sinusoidal harmonics the error between the original signal that is g of t and the approximated signal let us say this one combination of this this is x of t x of approximated signal so the error between them will be reduced so if you are taking infinite number of like this harmonics then almost the error between the approximation and the original signal can be uh, will be reduced and we can represent uh, the original periodic signal in terms of infinite number of like uh, uh, combination of sinusoidal signal so this is the idea of the fourier series okay trigonometric fourier series that means any periodic signal if i take so any periodic signal let's say continuous periodic signal g of t is a continuous periodic signal with its fundamental frequency omega not g of t is a continuous periodic signal with fundamental frequency omega not then it can be represented as sum of or approximate approximated as sum of infinite number of sin and cosine terms which are integral multiples of omega not okay that's what uh, what I, i was trying to explain here that only if you are taking more number of this uh, combination of sinusoidal signals the approximation will be better the error will be less so any periodic signal continuous time periodic signal can be expressed as like this a not plus a1 sin omega not t plus a2 
सॉरी a1 cos omega not t a2 cos 2 omega not t plus a3 cos 3 omega not t plus 1 plus b1 b1 sin omega not t plus b2 sin 2 omega not t plus 1 so any periodic signal can be represented as sum of sin and cosine terms and these are the harmonics this the omega not is the fundamental frequency so the harmonics are what omega integral multiples of omega not we have to take omega not 2 omega not 3 omega not up to so on n omega not so on like that okay see here omega not cos 2 omega not cos 3 omega not so on so on sin omega not sin 2 omega not like that so any periodic signal with fundamental frequency omega not can be represented like this okay so this i can write like g of t equal to a not plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity an cos n omega not to t plus bn sin n omega not to t okay so g of t is a periodic signal that we can represent like this so this is called trigonometric fourier series representation okay this is called trigonometric fourier series representation any periodic signal we can represent like this okay uh, is that okay can i proceed or do you have any doubt okay thank you now this a not is the dc term okay and this one this is the ac term present in it okay a not is the dc term and uh, this a this is the ac terms and a not an and bn they are called trigonometric fourier series coefficients okay a not an bn they are called trigonometric fourier series coefficients and already said omega not is the fundamental frequency fundamental frequency of the signal and now how to define these coefficients so we know we can express g of t as like this any periodic signal but how to express this coefficients so a not is nothing but the dc component so dc component is nothing but the area under one complete cycle of the signal so 1 by t integral 0 to t g of t dt let us say this is the signal let us say periodic signal like this so this is one cycle area under one cycle is nothing but the dc okay dc component present in that so that is this one 1 by t integral 0 to t g of t dt here see omega not is fundamental frequency so omega not is fundamental frequency so t is what 2 pi by omega not okay the time period a not is the dc component now an is defined as 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t cos n omega not to t dt okay the an coefficient the fourier series coefficient a an we can calculate like this okay similarly bn is 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t sin n omega not to t dt okay uh, this is about the trigonometric fourier series representation any periodic signal continuous time periodic signal uh, let me repeat it again any continuous time periodic signal can be represented as sum of like infinite sum of uh, sin and cosine terms which are integral multiples of the fundamental frequency omega not okay so this is represented like this this is the trigonometric fourier series representation 
and a not a n b n are called trigonometric fourier series coefficients they are defined like this okay and a a not is the actual dc component present in the signal so we so suppose if you want to represent the in the fourier series representation form first you need to find out a not so let us say signal is given like this let us say you are given a signal like this some signal like this some is this will be one cycle of the signal this one then you have to find out a not a n and b n using these formulas then you have to represent in this form okay now uh, we will see how the symmetry will affect on this fourier series uh, coefficients we will see the effect of symmetry on this fourier series coefficients a n and b n how the symmetry will affect will aff will be affecting this fourier series coefficients uh, let us say g of t is an even function or it has even symmetry okay i think you know these things g of t has even symmetry that means what you know what is even symmetry g of minus t is g of t right this is even symmetry g of minus t is g of t this is even symmetry that means let us say if i take one periodic signal like this let us say this is a periodic signal this is even signal even signal means in the signal if you instead of t if you replace minus t the same signal you have to get that is g of minus t is g of t or else with respect to the vertical axis y axis you just fold it it should be the signal should be mirror image with respect to the uh, symmetric with respect to the vertical axis suppose if i fold this with respect to y, y axis the right side one will be coincide with the left side one so then it is called it is having even symmetry okay right we can fold it with respect to y axis vertical axis see, the right side one exactly this one coincide with the left side one that is called even symmetry okay if the signal is having even symmetry then what about the fourier series coefficients we will see okay uh, now what happens to an so an we have seen 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t cos n omega not to t dt now g of t is an even signal it has even symmetry and cos is always an even function so even into even is an even function oh, so inside the integral that is an even function now what will happen the integration of this over a complete period from 0 to t is non zero quantity okay so integration of this integration of this even function over the complete period is a non zero quantity so an will have non zero values and if you see about the bn bn is what 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t into sin n omega not to t dt so g of t is even and sin is odd you know so even into odd is odd so this entire thing is an odd function so integration of that odd function over that complete period of the signal is zero okay so similarly a not also what is a not 1 by t we have seen integral 0 to t g of t dt so since it is even so integration of this is a non zero quantity so if g of t has even symmetry then a not and an will have non zero values and bn is zero if it is having even symmetry okay uh, this is the effect of even symmetry on the fourier series coefficient that means if x of n is even then we don't have these values we don't have bn bns will be zero only fourier series expansion will have only these values 
okay uh, similarly if x of n sorry if g of t has odd symmetry odd symmetry you know odd function or odd symmetry kind of thing is what g of minus t is what minus g of t okay that means so odd signal means this is some kind of odd signal see with respect to y axis if i if i fold this with respect to y axis it will not coincide so first you have to fold with respect to y axis then you have you have to fold with respect to horizontal axis then only it will coincide okay you, you imagine first you fold it with respect to y axis it is not like uh, coincide the, the right side part will not coincide with the left side part then again you have to fold it with respect to horizontal axis that then it will be uh, like coincide i think uh, this already you know that's why i'm trying to uh, uh, revise those things so then it is called odd symmetry if, if instead of t if you replace minus t then you have to get minus g of t okay now what will happen if it is odd one so what will happen to a not a not is what 1 by t integral 0 to t g of t dt since g of t is odd so odd signal over the entire period a not will be zero okay and what about an an is 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t into cos right cos n omega not t so g of t is odd one and cos is even one odd into even is odd so integration of odd function over the entire period is zero okay and what about bn so 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t into sin right so g of t is odd sin is odd so odd into odd will become odd so in sorry odd into odd will become even odd function into odd function is even function so integration of the even function over the entire period is non zero quantity so if it is having odd symmetry if g of t is having hard symmetry then a not and an are zero and bn is non zero okay if it is having odd symmetry a not an is zero and bn is non zero okay so how the symmetry is affecting fourier series coefficients we have seen here and there is another kind of symmetry that is called half wave symmetry half wave symmetry or rotational symmetry rotational symmetry that is what we will see here g of t is g of t plus r minus t by 2 that means it is like c you shift the signal right shift or left shift the signal by an amount of half the time period okay then it should be minus g of t okay either you right shift it or left shift it by an amount of uh, half the time period then you should get minus g of t one example i am drawing here based on that you will understand so let us say this is the signal this is the signal whether it is having odd symmetry or not we'll check first it is having even symmetry and we will check whether it is having half wave symmetry or not now what is the time period this is the time period right so this is the time period now i am shifting the signal towards right or left by amount of the time period let us say uh, this is let us say this is minus from here this is zero let us say t by 2 t so i am shifting it towards right by half the time period so what what will happen 
Now, after I shift the signal, it will be something like this. Right? I'm just shifting the signal. Uh, sorry, half the time period means somewhat I have to shift it. So, half the time period. So, this is the half the time period. Right? So, I'm shifting the signal by half the time period means I'll get the signal like this. Okay, right shift edit. This is what if this is G of T, then this is G of T minus T by T. I shifted the signal half the time period. Okay. Now you take the uh, 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 negative of that that is minus G of T minus T by two. Now I'm taking negative of the signal. If I take the negative of the signal, what will happen for this signal? I'm taking the negative multiply with minus one. I'll get something like this. Okay. Now if you check G of T is equal to same as the shifted and reversed version of this one. So this is called half wave symmetry. Is it okay? So this is called half wave symmetry. Another example I can take like only one period of this I'm taking is the sine wave. It will be repeated again and again. The same thing will be repeated again and again. So this is half the time period is T by 2. This is another T by 2. Okay. Now I'm shifting the signal by half the time period. Okay. Half the time period. Now you reverse the signal. That means the remaining the remaining part of the signal like the periodic right so half the time period i shifted the signal now i reverse it i'm just reversing the signal you can see this and this are same okay this is called half wave symmetry or rotational symmetry okay so half wave symmetry means if g of t is there then first you shift it towards right or left by half the time period and after that you take the negative of it then these two should be equal then it is called half wave symmetry or rotational symmetry if the signal is having odd half wave symmetry then only it will have odd harmonics okay odd harmonics will be present non zero and even harmonics will be become zero okay the system if the, if the signal is having half wave symmetry odd harmonics will be non zero that means for n equal to 1 3 5 7 like that non zero and even harmonics that is n equal to 0 2 like that or even harmonics will be become zero Okay, not zero, two, four, six, like that. This is about half wave symmetry. Now we have seen three symmetries even symmetry, odd symmetry, half wave symmetry. If a sig signal is having even symmetry, then a n non zero, a naught, a n non zero, and b n equal to zero. If it is having odd, zero, odd symmetry, A naught, A n will be 0 and B n not equal to 0. If it is having a half wave symmetry, A naught non zero, A naught will be having some value. N will be non zero for odd n. Similarly, B n is non zero for odd n. Okay. Uh, for even n, it is 0 for n equal to even both a n and b n are 0 0 for n even so this is about trigonometric Fourier series expansion and uh, uh, the effect of symmetry on the trigonometric Fourier series coefficients 
So you can ask me if you have any doubts. If you don't have any doubts, then we can uh, go for the problem. Feel free to unmute your mic and ask. Can I proceed? Sir, in how we have symmetry, okay. the component AO, N is 0, so 0 is even, so won't it be 0? Actually, half wave symmetry will not affect this uh, A0. Okay? Okay. Half wave symmetry will not affect A0. So it can be 0 or may not be 0, depending on this A0, how we will calculate, calculate 1 by T integral 0 to t g of t dt right so if it is even symmetry uh, then a naught will will have non zero value odd symmetry then a naught is definitely zero and suppose it is having neither even nor nor odd maybe it is having some half wave symmetry then half wave symmetry will not affect a naught okay Any other question? Uh, fine. Let us solve it to questions from the previous year. Uh, this is the question. This question was given in gate 2017 AC set 1 for 1 mark. A periodic signal X of t has trigonometric Fourier series expansion. So this is the trigonometric Fourier series expansion we have seen X of t. It is given as A naught plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity A n cos n omega naught t plus B n sin n omega naught t. This we have seen. Now if x of t equal to minus x of minus t and minus x of this one, then we can conclude that four options are given. Okay. So just now we have seen. Uh, so first condition is what 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 is the first condition in this given? X of t is minus x of minus t. So x of t is minus x of minus t that means what uh, this is with symmetry odd symmetry or even symmetry odd symmetry yeah it's odd symmetry and half wave symmetry yeah exactly it is having odd symmetry odd symmetry means o only b n non zero right and a naught a n are zero fine now if you see here uh, another condition is given x of t is minus x of t minus minus pi by omega naught. Actually for half wave symmetry just now we have seen g of t is minus g of t plus or minus t by 2. Right? What is this actually? Pi by omega naught is nothing but pi by omega is nothing but what? 2 pi by T right omega naught is what 2 pi by t implies from here pi by omega naught is nothing but t by 2 so pi by omega naught is nothing but t by 2 that means minus x of t minus t by 2 so it is having half wave symmetry right so it is having half wave symmetry okay since half wave symmetry, so already odd symmetry A naught A n anyway 0, only B n are non zero. Now, since it is having half wave symmetry, so B n is non zero for n equal to odd and B n equal to zero for n equal to even. 
odd symmetry anyway this a not and an anyway zero okay so bn is having non zero value when n equal to odd so you can see here first option is an or zero for all n correct only and bn or zero for n is even right bn is zero for n is even so first option is correct only right an or zero for all n bn or zero for even n bn is non zero for odd n second option an or zero for all n correct bn or zero for odd n wrong bn or zero for even n bn or non zero for odd n third option is an or zero for n even no an or zero for all n an or zero for n odd this is also wrong so first option is the correct one is that okay uh, is it clear yeah thank you so we have to see here so this type of questions you have to see which symmetry it is having based on that we have to choose one of the options uh, similar kind of question another question we will see yeah this question was given in gate 2015 in triple e set 1 for two marks okay the signum function is given by signum of x equal to x by mod x when x not equal to 0 and 0 when x equal to 0 the fourier series expansion of signum cos omega sorry cos t has same only sine terms only cosine terms like that so what we need to do here so signum function is given but they are asking for the fourier series expansion they are asking for the fourier series expansion for this signum cos t okay that means this is our g of t our g of t is signum cos t so for this they are asking about the fourier series coefficients so what they are asking sin and the options if you see sin and cosine terms they are asking uh, that's why definitely it is a uh, trigonometric fourier series expansion only okay now if you see here sigma x first we will understand so for x equal to 0 anyway it is 0 for x equal to 0 anyway it is 0 given now here mod x we know mod x is positive when x greater than 1 right So x greater than zero. So mod x is x positive when x greater than zero, and mod x is negative minus x when x x less than zero. So I can define this. I can split into x greater than zero and x less than zero. Now for x greater than zero, it will become x by mod x is plus x, right? So that means yes, sir. One and minus one. Yeah, and for x less than zero, mod x is minus x, so this is minus one. So this is the signum function. So if I draw this signum function, if I draw this, this is x, this is signum x. So for x greater than one zero, it is one. For x less than zero, it is minus one. At x equal to zero, it is zero. okay this is the signum function they are given but uh, signum of cos t our g of t is signum of cos t now first i will draw cos function based from the tile try to draw the signum function so first i am drawing cos t it is signum yeah from here yeah i am drawing cos t so you know how a cos function looks like right this is cos t then what is the time period omega is what actually cos omega not t right cos omega not t 
but omega naught is one, right? Omega naught is one. So time period is what? Two pi by omega naught. So two pi is the time period. Okay. So if I take this is zero, and one complete cycle is two pi. That means here to here one complete cycle. This is two pi. So here pi. Similarly here minus pi. Here minus two pi. Okay, this is cos t. Now you draw signum t. Our g of t is what? Signum of cos t. So our g of t is what? Signum of cos t. So we have seen when uh, x greater than zero, it is plus one. When x less than zero, it is minus one, right? So from minus pi to pi. Inside quantity cos t greater than one greater than zero, right? So signum is greater than one, and from sorry, uh, from this is pi by two, this is minus pi by two plus pi by two. So cos is greater than zero from pi by two to pi by two. There signum is plus one, and from here to here, so this side. From here to here, it is less than zero, so it is negative. So like this, signum we will get a square function, right? Is it okay? So from here to here, it is greater than zero, cos t greater than zero. So signum of cos t what one, and from here to here. Uh, Signum is less than zero. Signum of uh, sorry, cos is less than there is sigma of cos t minus one. So this is minus one. This is plus one. Now this is our g of t. Now actually the question is what? In the question they are asking same for Fourier series uh, coefficients uh, whether it is having hard harmonics, even harmonics like that. Now for this we need to find out. Uh, whether it is odd symmetry, it is having odd symmetry or even symmetry, or half wave symmetry. Based on that, we can uh, 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 come come to a conclusion. Uh, you can tell me it is having which symmetry? Is it odd even symmetry? Even symmetry. Right? It is even symmetry, right? So you can just fold the signal with respect to vertical axis. Just fold the signal with respect to vertical axis. It is symmetrical with respect to vertical axis. Clearly, you can see. Then you can like coincide the right side part on the left side part. So it is G of T is what even, even symmetry. So what we will have, we will have a naught, and we may have a n. But what about a naught? Does it having a naught? Yes, sir. No. Is that having even component? Sorry, uh, DC component. So DC component is what one by t integral zero to t. Uh, in integral zero to t g of t dt. Right. This you can see area under g of t in one cycle. Area in one cycle by A time period. So if you take area, this is positive area. This is negative area. Area will be cancelled. So a naught is zero actually. So even symmetry, a naught need not be zero. But DC component, how we calculate area? That means this is the formula, right? This is nothing but what? This is area under one cycle by time period. So this is even area. Sorry, uh, positive area. This is negative area. Total area under one cycle is zero, so a naught is zero. So we will have a n non-zero values. We will have. Now, does it having half wave symmetry? Can somebody comment on it? Is it having half wave symmetry? I think we have seen the same signal, right? Yes, sir. Right. It is having half wave symmetry. Because uh, 
if we see here this is minus pi by 2 0 pi by 2 uh, this is 3 pi by 2 this is minus 3 pi by 2 so what is the time period actually time period is 2 pi now shift the signal by t by 2 so g of g of t minus t by 2 that is t by 2 is nothing but pi we shift it by half the time period so i am shifting it by this much pi so what you get is yeah this one okay 0 pi by 2 minus pi by 2 now again you take negative of that you will get the same signal so it is having half wave symmetry so it is having even symmetry so an or non zero half wave symmetry that means even terms of an are zero so from this we can see a it is having So even symmetry, so an non-zero and half wave symmetry that means an is non-zero for odd values of n is the answer. Uh, that means an is non-zero means only it is having cosine terms right. So we have seen the expansion here right? trigonometric Fourier series expansion. Yeah, here right. An non-zero means cosine terms we will having. Bn non-zero means sine terms we will be having. So this one. Only sine terms. First option is only sine terms with all harmonics. Actually, Bn are zero, so sine terms are zero. So that is wrong. Only cosine terms with all all harmonics. Cosine terms are there, but odd harmonics. Second option is zero. Third term is third option is only sine terms with v even numbered harmonics that is also wrong fourth option only cosine terms with odd numbered harmonics fourth option is correct an non zero for odd n that means cosine terms will be present okay Ma, is this okay uh, any doubts from this yes, sir. okay sir. yeah Fine. Now, having understood the trigonometric Fourier series uh, expansion, now we will see exponential Fourier series expansion. Or complex Fourier series. Okay. Actually, uh, this we will see now. This exponential Fourier series representation is a compact representation, compact form of representing trigonometric Fourier series ex expansion form. Okay, so we have seen any periodic signal can be represented as sum of infinite sum of sine and cosine terms, which are integral multiples of fundamental frequency. Still, this we can modify and represent in the form of exponential Fourier series form. So, now the trigonometric Fourier series form is this one, right? A naught plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n omega naught t plus b n sin n omega naught t. Now, what I will do here? This is the trigonometric Fourier series representation, right? From this, I will derive how to represent it in exponential Fourier series representation. Now, this a naught cos n omega naught t, how I can represent e power j n omega naught t plus e power minus j n omega naught t by 2. We can write like this, right? So, cos theta is e power j theta plus e power minus j theta by 2. 
Similarly, sin n omega naught, how I'll represent? e power j n omega naught t minus e power minus j n omega naught t by 2j. Now, if you replace those things, then I'll get a naught plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity. So, what I get here a n, sorry, directly I'm writing here e power j n omega naught t into a n by 2 okay uh, and what i'll get minus j b n by 2 i'll get okay and plus e power minus j n omega naught t into a n by 2 plus j b n by 2 this only we can represent so some c naught or a naught sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n minus j b n by 2 just i am taking the terms common that's it into a power j n omega naught t plus a n minus j plus j b n by 2 into e power minus j n omega naught t okay now let us say this we say c naught this we say c naught this we say some c n and this will call C minus n okay and in this so what I get here C naught plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity C n e power plus j n omega naught t plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity C minus n e power minus j n omega naught t actually in this instead of minus n if we replace some m okay instead of you can later you can try instead of minus n you can replace m so it will get like something like this okay m equal to minus to minus infinity c minus m e power for cm e power jm omega naught t so instead of m we can now replace n so this entire thing what you get is c naught plus this one that is n equal to 1 to infinity this is n equal to minus 1 to minus infinity total what you get is n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity c n e power j n omega naught t okay that means the periodic signal g of t how we can express we can represent in this form also c n e power j n omega naught t so this is called exponential Fourier series representation why because e power j n omega naught t in terms of instead of sine and cosine we are representing in the form of exponential terms e power j n omega naught t okay now this is called exponential Fourier series representation or complex Fourier series representation okay now suppose you are given let us say uh, you uh, suppose you are uh, uh, you have you are given trigonometric Fourier series coefficient that means a naught a n and b n you are given from this you want to get exponential Fourier series coefficients how to get c naught is what already we have seen c naught is what c naught is nothing but a naught only dc term will not change okay what is c n c n is this one right a n minus j b n by 2 so from the derivation only 
Cn is what? An minus Jbn by 2. What is C minus N? An plus Jbn by 2. So An plus Jbn by 2. Okay. So you can see here Cn complex conjugate is C minus N from here. Complex conjugate means you know it. Cn complex conjugate means what? An minus Jbn by 2. If you take complex conjugate of this, you will get this one. An plus Jbn by 2. So Cn complex conjugate is C minus N. Okay. And what about Cn? An by 2 minus Jbn by 2. An we know from trigonometric Fourier series 1. An is what? 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t sin n omega n at t right similarly sorry cos n omega n at t similarly bn is what 2 by t integral 0 to t g of t into cos n, sin n omega n at t right if you replace those and simplify then we will get the expression for cn is 1 by t integral 0 to t uh, g of t e power minus j n omega naught t dt okay this is the exponential Fourier series coefficient okay so the exponential Fourier series representation is this one any trigonom sorry any periodic signal we can represent like this any periodic signal with fundamental period omega naught, we can represent exponential Fourier series representation in this way. Sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity Cn e power j n omega naught t. Okay, na? there Cn is nothing but exponential Fourier series coefficient. Okay, C naught is nothing but the DC or average component. And how that cn is defined how the cn is defined 1 by t already have written 0 to t g of t e power minus j n omega naught t dt suppose in the suppose in some gate question if you are given with trigonometric Fourier series coefficients that is a n and b n how to get cn in this way from the derivation only i got this relations Similarly, if you are given with exponential Fourier series coefficients, C0, Cn, and C minus n, from that you can derive the An and Bn. Okay, you can simplify those and get An and Bn. Now, Cn are nothing but exponential Fourier series coefficients. Let us say this I can represent as a magnitude and phase. Okay, Cn we can represent as magnitude and phase so with respect to omega you draw the magnitude spectrum so at omega 0 omega naught 2 omega naught spectrum is discrete right it is a two sided spectrum okay this is c naught and you will have C1 here, some C1 here, C2 here, something like that. Minus C1 here, minus C2 here. Okay. If you draw the magnitude of the exponential Fourier series coefficient with respect to the omega, you will get a two-sided spectrum. Mostly you will get an even spectrum. Definitely it will be even one. Okay. It will be even one because cn is this one right cn is this one c minus n is this one magnitude will be same cn is the complex conjugate of c minus n so magnitude is same so c1 and c minus 1 will have the same value sorry this is c minus 2 like this similarly you can draw the phase spectrum suppose if you are a phase plot also you can draw frequency versus phase okay this is about uh, exponential Fourier series expansion now it is having many properties just like Fourier transform uh, maybe in the interest of time just uh, I'm not touching those now based on that we will solve a problem now so yeah 
this is the problem so based on whatever we have seen this is the problem given you can see here uh, this was given in gate 2015 ece set to uh, for one mark uh, you can read out the question the magnitude and phase of the complex fourier series coefficients complex or exponential fourier series coefficients ak so instead of ck they have given ak cn instead of cn they have given ak that's it of a periodic signal x of t are shown in the figure choose the correct statement from the four choices given uh, notation c is the set of complex numbers c means set of complex number r is the set of purely real numbers and p is the set of purely imaginary numbers okay so instead of cn in this they have given ak that's it everything is same exponential or complex fourier series coefficients they have given so i said right cn it is heavy it can be represented as magnitude and phase similarly ak magnitude is this phase is this they have represented now from this spectrum we need to find out uh, we, we need to find out which of the following options are correct r means purely real p means purely imaginary uh, c means complex and d third inform third option fourth option is the information given is not sufficient to draw any conclusion about x of t fine from this we will try to uh, we will try to uh, express the fourier series coefficients we will try to express now what is a not from here can somebody tell me what is a not 1 right at k equal to 0 this is a not right 1 what is the phase there phase is 0 a not is 1 and now what is a1 a1 and a minus 1 both are zeros right see at k equal to 1 0 now what is a2 for a2 what is the magnitude at k equal to 2 magnitude is 2 what is the phase minus pi right minus pi right you can see this one minus pi right phase phase i can represent e power minus pi e power minus j pi or 2 into e power minus j pi a minus 2 also same a minus 2 also see 2 phase is minus pi similarly what about a3 what is the magnitude for a3 3 phase is minus pi right see for 3 also minus pi so e power minus j pi ok and what about for similarly for a equal to minus 3 also same thing magnitude is 3 phase is minus pi 3 e power minus j pi remaining all are 0 that means a1 a2 sorry a2 a minus 2 a3 a minus 3 and a naught are existing remaining all are zeros right now we will solve this question uh, So, g of t is what? So, sigma and some k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity a k e power sorry plus j k omega naught t this is the Fourier series representation right? Now, we have a naught non-zero so I can write this a naught plus a1 e power j omega naught t plus a minus 1 e power minus j omega naught t sorry a2 a1 and a minus 1 0 right so we don't have those a2 non-zero components we have so a2 e power j2 omega naught t a minus 2 also non zero a minus 2 2 omega naught t plus a3 e power 
right plus j 3 omega naught t plus a minus 3 e power minus j 3 omega naught t right only we have these values right yeah a2 a minus 2 a3 a minus 3 a naught these values we have remaining all are zeros that's why only i have written those so a naught is 1 okay a2 is what 2 e power minus j pi okay and a minus 2 also same one so what you get i'm just taking common minus j2 omega naught t right similarly a3 and a minus 3 both are same that is 3 e power minus j pi so into e power j3 omega naught t plus e power minus j3 omega naught t fine now what is this e power minus j pi what is e power minus j pi e power minus e power j theta is what cos theta plus j sin theta right so e power minus j pi we want what cos pi plus j sin pi sin pi anyway zero cos pi is minus one so this is nothing but minus one phase okay minus one right pi means 180 degree 180 degree means just opposite direction right so minus one similarly this is also minus one and what about this one cos theta is what cos theta is what e power j theta plus e power minus j theta by 2 right so it is like what this is what 2 cos theta right you can see here this is like 2 cos theta okay so i'm writing this 1 plus 2 into minus 1 into 2 cos 2 omega naught t plus 3 into minus 1 into this one is what 2 cos 3 omega naught t so this our g of t is what 1 minus 4 cos 2 omega naught t minus 6 cos 3 omega naught t so from the Fourier series coefficients given from the spectrum they have given magnitude and phase spectrum from that we have like got the uh, Fourier series coefficients a case from that we have derived the expression for g of t so these things already we have studied earlier just uh, for some time now this is what signal g of t will get something like like this 1 minus 4 cos something minus 6 cos something is it real imaginary or complex can somebody please tell me is it real imaginary or complex yes real right one is real <coughs> cos is real cos everything is real we don't have any imaginary terms so it is a real one so from this what first option is what x of t we just said g of t but x of t is real correct second option is x of t is purely p means imaginary right is purely imaginary wrong third option is complex minus real wrong fourth option is the information given is not sufficient to draw any conclusion no this is sufficient whatever the Fourier series spectrum they have given coefficient spectrum that is sufficient to derive a conclusion about it is the two is this okay if this kind of problems are given so you have to get the coefficients cn so magnitude they have given and phase spectrum they have given you get the coefficients if you know the coefficients we can get the Fourier series uh, sorry representation of the signal so is it clear uh, do you have any doubts My any doubts? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
thank you i think uh, sorry for the delay uh, there is another session i think started you can join that and somebody asked about lti systems right maybe in next class or next to next session we will uh, uh, try to cover those topics thank you thank you all thank you everyone. sir complex minus real will also be imaginary number right yeah complex minus real uh, it may not be completely imaginary so complex minus all real numbers is okay if r is set of purely real numbers but if it is r is set of all real numbers then it is imaginary okay if r is set of complete real numbers then complex minus real is imaginary okay but uh, there they mention like r is set of purely real numbers oh, if it is complete real numbers definitely it is complex So they are given p and c minus are both, so that's why I asked. Ha. But uh, R is set of purely real numbers. Okay, R is set of purely. If it is R is complete set of real numbers, yeah, exactly. C minus R is complete set of imaginary numbers. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. And if the first option is correct, the remaining we can just explore. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.